Right guys, in this section I think now we need to look at the special types of functions. In other words, functions we can give names like categorize that these are these types of functions, these are these types of functions. But first of all, I'm going to recap from what we did the school. Since it's so let's say let me just write the sorry for the wrong ink. Let me just write the functions. Now what is important for me is that we know how a function works. That will give an input, it gives out a single output. We know what is an inverse function. We know what happens to a function and its inverse. And we know the relationship of graph of function and its inverse. All those things are things we have got at hand, isn't it? So now let's look at the different types of functions. I think the easiest, some people actually are not just some people, generally in mathematics, people describe these functions as very nice functions or just nice functions which are the nicest functions you will see later in other chapters that these are the functions which are very easy to work with in different uh, situations so I just made a mistake and raised that functions the nicest class of functions I think are the polynomials let me write there poly poly no Yes. By a polynomial, I mean a mathematical entity of this nature, or a mathematical object of this nature. A0, A0 is just a coefficient. You can take it as a C, where you've got an equation Y is equal to MX plus C. Then plus A1X plus A2 x squared plus dash 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 a n x to the power n all together now if a n is not equal to zero then we say this is a, a polynomial of degree degree n that n is natural number like one, two, three, four, and so on. Is it? Okay, so that's according to here. Then uh, let's say case number zero here. Let's say case number zero here. Let's say n is equal to zero for all n greater or equals to Two. What am I saying there? I'm saying from here onwards, all these a n. Oh, sorry, I'm making a mistake there. I'm supposed to want to say a n. Let's say a n is equal to zero for all n greater or equal to two. What am I saying? I'm saying from here onwards, all these coefficients are zero. What are we left with? We are left with something like f of x equals to a1 plus, sorry, a0 plus a1x. What type of function is that? Equation of a line, is it? Yes. Then we've got what we call a linear function. That is linear. And what is important with linear, you must actually see that the, the degree of that is 1, is it? Okay. So, then Let's look at case number one. Let's say a n is equal to zero for all n greater or equals to three, which means from there onwards we put zero. So which means now we've got f of x, which is equals to a zero plus a one x plus a2 x squared. Can you agree with me that this is the same thing as a x squared plus b x plus c? What kind of an animal is that in mathematics? A quadratic function. All together. Okay. So, so we can continue this process. We get different types of functions. The next function I'm going to look at in this way, it will be a cubic function and so on. Is it?
Okay. So what is important here, what I want to highlight to you, to, to you is that I think things like line, quadratic, cubic, you must actually be very, very like, I use the word fluent. I don't know whether that is the right word, but I hope it's going to be understood. You must be very, very fluent and very, very like skillful in plotting, understanding their properties and so on and so forth. Indeed. So if I ask you to tell me about it, you can tell me easily about the parabola. All together, the line. I think the line we've discussed a lot, maybe for now, just for a few minutes, let's look at the, the parabola. All together, let's look at the parabola. Um, let me say... The parabola, normally, like we said there, is a x squared plus b x plus c. Isn't it? And again, you can make some variations in the parabola here. Let's say we have got a equals to one, b equals to c equals to zero. Then we've got something like y is equal to x squared which may be the simplest parabola which we can have. And we know its graph. We must know its graph. On the x-axis, the graph looks developing like that around the y-axis. And the symmetric, isn't it? By symmetric, I mean... What do I mean? <laughs> so in other words, there's a line which Split the graph into two so that maybe if you fold one over the other, you just exactly see the same thing, isn't it? Yeah, that's uh, that's symmetric. Now, the other thing which is very important is that you must understand that this graph, as it is in this form, we can go into some kind of algebraic manipulation here until we get to something like a x minus h all squared plus Okay, this is the other thing I'm going to share with you guys. When you are studying, try to find ways of getting your th things in, mem in your memory, not really memorizing without understanding, but understand, then try to see that you have a way of sticking your things, those things in your memory. This H and this K he has got a meaning. Do you know it, is it? I think you've discussed it. But for me, for easy understanding, I think this, this was a very good choice of letters here. H is for horizontal movement. Horizontal movement. Now it's translation horizontal, isn't it? And the K is for vertical, ka, 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 ka. Vertical translation in any graph. If you've got something like that, you must know that that graph has been moved horizontally. Yeah. Uh, um, I will later, in a t tutorial form, I will actually use a, a quick computer to, to draw different variations of this graph so I can see how the, the movement goes this way and that way. Altogether. Okay. You understand that. This is what happens there. Okay. So that's, that's the, 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 the then, then talking about parabola, another function which I would also want to also highlight there, I think is the hyperbola. Is it? Hyperbola. The function y is equal to 1 over x. All together. Then you remember this function, I'm just going quick here because I, I suppose you understand this thing, isn't it? Right. This function, whatever input it gets, it inverts it, isn't it? So if it gets somewhere here, 1 over 1000, a very small number, it will be somewhere very, very high there, isn't it? Like 1000. So which means as you come closer to this 
zero from this direction, this function is growing bigger and bigger then, is it? But if you come this side and say, this number is 1 over 1,000, but now if you come here to 1,000 somewhere there, let's say this was 1,000, then you say 1 over 1,000, what do you get? Very, very small number, is it? But if you come to 1 here, you say 1 over 1, what do you get? 1, is it? So which means it passes through 1, 1, is it? Is that right? So it will then come this way. But never touch the zero. If you come this side, something different is going to happen. We are going to have the, we are going to have the minus one. If you take minus one, one over minus one, get minus one. So it's going to be somewhere there. If you go, if you look at that, do the analysis, you see that we come also with a cable which comes that way. Now, talking about what we, dis we discussed here, you must then be able to get a function, be able to plot a function which says 1 over x minus 2 plus 6. What's going to happen? There will be minus 2 movement. Which direction? To the? To the positive side. Isn't it? Okay. And then there will be 6 movement to the? So what do you do? You just take this line. This. This line. This line. This line of the asymptote. And just move it 1, 2. Then plot it there. As an image of that line after translating 2. Isn't it? Then you think about this one, you take this line, which is also an asymptote, transport it vertically and go one, two, three, four, five, six, then then what do you do? You come and take exactly the same graph and draw them there and there. I hope that is that is nice, isn't it? So we're going to have a, a graph there, which is not different in any way from this one. And the graph there. But the graph of this function and the graph of that function, they are different only in position. All together. Okay. Yes, my brother. The asymptotes? Yeah, yeah. In this case. No, no, no. It, it, it is always the horizontal and the vertical line in this case. So in this case, when you don't have a shift, on x, then you see y axis and thus x axis. Those are the two asymptotes. For this graph, I, I don't know whether I, I understand the word diapsis very correctly. You are talking about the symptom. For this graph, no, it's not possible. For this one. But for other functions, yes, you can have only one asymptote. Yeah. Are we answered? Okay. Yeah, okay. Okay, so that's another, another function there which is uh, very essential to understand. Now, at this moment now, I'm going to move to another function which I think is maybe new to you, or not new, but maybe some people, yes, let's discuss it. It's also dis important to discuss this. Let's talk about what you call um, the absolute value, the absolute value. First of all, I would like to talk about the absolute value of an individual number before I talk about the absolute value of it, the, fun, the absolute value function. How to well. Now, I think the easiest thing to get to this is to use the number line. When we delete number line, we draw a number line like that, we always have a reference point which is zero where like everything starts. Now, if we choose this to be one, then this distance, we then call it 
a unit. Then what's going to happen? All the divisions are going to get from that unit, isn't it? So when you need two, we'll have to transport that unit to there, then you get two. And then you get three, four, and so on. On the left hand side also, we use exactly the same unit, minus one, minus two, minus three. Then if we pause a bit and think, maybe hard or not very hard, it becomes clear that there's something common between minus three and the three. There's something common, something which joins minus three and three. What is it? What do you think? Think about it. That is very important. When you're learning something, you must try to look at outstanding things. What is outstanding here? What is striking? What if? Those are the things which are interesting, which maybe you can write down as knowledge or as whatever you want to highlight. What is interesting between uh, minus 3 and 3? There's something interesting. Apart from the fact that we know that any number a plus a minus a is equal to 0. That's one of the things which is interesting about this thing. Isn't it? This is what makes the equations which are like 2x plus 1 equal to 0 equal to 5 possible to solve. Isn't it? Because addition and subtraction are like the function and its inverse. Or an operation and its inverse. Isn't it? Okay. Tell me what else is interesting between minus 2 and 3. Yes? They are symmetric from this? Okay. Say it another way. In another way, is it is exactly I understand what you say. But say it in another way that in such a way that somebody who doesn't, is never going to school can understand. Yes? Uh -huh. If I were to walk from minus 3, from 0 to 3, or walk from 0 to minus 3, I'll walk exactly the same number of units altogether. Okay. To say that, now putting it in a kind of mathematical way, to say that is to say the absolute value, these bars I'm writing here, read them as absolute value of minus 3 altogether. Or if I just use a, a representative of any number x, I'll say absolute value of x. Then let's write this thing. Absolute value of x. That's how you read that. This is very important. I, I, I always say, I don't know. I don't know whether I'm wrong or right, but I feel I'm right. When you've got an expression in front of you, mathematical expression, a word, whatever, you must be able to read the expression back to you in order to interpret the meaning. The, the meaning might not be in the writing, but the meaning must be, it might be in how you interpret the reading of whatever you read to yourself. In the, okay. So now, this thing says absolute value of x. Now, absolute value of x then, according to what the gentleman has told us, is exactly the same as absolute value of 3. And that is equals to 3. In other words, there are 3 units from 0 to minus 3. There are 3 units from 0 to 3. And we call that absolute value. Sometimes people can just say is the distance of the number from the origin. Altogether. Sometimes you can use that kind of language. Are we there? Okay. I think you can see now that the absolute value of x is always going to be greater or equal to zero. And equal to zero only when x is equal to zero. Isn't it? Out there, out there. Okay. But now, this is not a definition. I'm just trying to make you have a feel of what I'm talking about. Isn't it? Now, let's come to a definition of what is really, how do we define an absolute value of a number x? Now, it is, you will find it defined this way in books. Absolute value of x. This is actually what I'm writing here, is from this discussion what you've seen there. If we're dealing with 3, the absolute value of 3 is 3. Isn't it? What I'm trying to say there, I'm saying if we're dealing with a, a positive number, or a non-negative number, x, the absolute value is x, if x is greater or equal to 0. Out here. Now, if x is negative, if x is negative. So that's the part now which is not covered, isn't it? 
but check if we take x negative but we want this function to always deliver a positive number what did you do you pick a negative number you want to deliver from it deliver a positive number what did you do what would you do i'm asking you you've got a negative number there it is it's saying as here it's talking about a negative number you've got a negative number but out of this negative number you want to produce a positive number because the absolute value is said here to be always greater or equal to zero what are you going to do to this number to produce a, a positive number multiply by a negative number so if this number is two i go and pick a negative three then i multiply okay a negative one why because one is a special number it is it it doesn't when you multiply a number by one the magnitude does not change is it now if you take a negative one the, that one will multiply the number the negative will fall is it so then you have got to say now this is uh, that all together so please get used to to this kind of situation as you can see i'm teaching but most of the times i would like to get the answers from you or put the through the answers right so be prepared to say wrong answers and the correct answers the two are important did i tell you the story about wrong answers and correct answers yeah. the correct answers are going to tell me how much how far we've gone learning the wrong answers will tell me how far we still need to cover some ground isn't it so the two things are important okay good so now we've got a definition of a absolute value now i think we can talk about the, the absolute value function in other words we've got to get something like y is equal to f of x and this function is an absolute value function can you move okay let's move now is ab solute value function don't mind my the way i speak english sometimes i say the value of sense sometimes i say the value uh, when i say value is when I, I i remember those people who always say me as to say value but naturally i'll say value <laughs> <laughs> right so that's just a joke don't worry about that so y is equal to f of x f of x equals to absolute value of the function oh that this is the statement now of f of x i think what is important for us now we know how functions transform on the system of coordinates how they are shifted to the left how they are shifted to the right how they are lifted up vertically we know that it is so we're also going to take all that information to this function but before we take that permission to this function we must first of all unpack the function and see what is this graph looking like but this graph is already given by this by the definition x if x is greater or equal to zero minus x if x is less than zero i think i've got a question for you you said what type of function is this remember what we, we, we discussed before what kind of function is this the absolute value function what type of function is this yes a certain function but think about what we did this week and uh, we talked about it, it piecewise ah piecewise defined function so what are we having there we're having two functions y equals to x and the y is equal to minus x all together yeah. now if you think about their graphs i think i did sketch these graphs before isn't it if you think about the graphs of these functions this one is the bisector of the first and third quadrant that is i'm talking about the first one and the second one is this one isn't it so the graph of absolute value is going to come out from this situation if now you now go back 
to a discussion on piecewise defined functions. Piecewise defined function just means that we don't have a single expression for the whole domain. In other words, one expression has got this domain pattern and the other one has got another domain somewhere in this. So the first line here says it's x, which is y is equal to x, but where? Only when x is greater or equal to zero. So that thing there, zero is included, remember? Then we've got that line. Altogether, which is that part? Well, they're calling only for that part of the function going on that side. Then when we come this side for this part, we are calling for this function. But where? Only for less than zero. This function will not take a valid zero. Why? Strict inequality there. Isn't it? So there are not two values for that function there. Altogether. Okay. Then what we do now? We come and they draw our nice capital letter V on the system of coordinates. So tomorrow if I can make a joke and say somebody ask me what is absolute value? I say the graph of absolute value is capital letter V. <laughs> All together. Ah, okay. Why am I using those kind of things? I'm using those kind of things to strike similarity so that you can remember, so that you can ever associate something you are learning with something you already know. Yes, my sister. Come again? Zero is included on this right hand side of the, for the part. This one. But when you come for this function, no. So if we really were to draw the graph of this function, I would go and make an open circle there. All together. You understand what I'm saying? If I was only drawing the graph of this function for this region, I would end with an open circle there. All together. Why? Because it is a strict inequality. Isn't it? But now I'm not drawing the graph of that function. I'm drawing the graph of the absolute value from the left to the right. So it goes up to zero, but when it takes get to zero, it picks up this expression instead of this one. So there, there's no open circle. Then that's why we don't have that open circle. Explain. Good. I hope when I ask for this thing from you, you are going to deliver it the way you're understanding it now. Are you really understanding it? Good. Are you happy? Good. I'm happy if you are happy. Right, another question? Another question? Okay, so this is the absolute value function now. Now, from the previous discussion now, you must have to understand now what will happen if I've got something like um, x minus 4, or even let's say plus 4, minus 6. This is still an absolute value function, but not the, the standard, the simplest one, a transformed one. Isn't it? There's been a translation, there's been a vertical translation, a horizontal translation. So I wanted to go in there, engage these kind of things and uh, solve problems. Are you ready for that? Okay. So now, let's pass to another stage of this thing now. What we're talking about now is uh, related to inequalities involving absolute value. Inequalities In this case, I just write inequalities. I suppose you understand that we're dealing with the absolute value. I think the basic <laughs> basic I don't want to use this word basic I think the, uh, I, I don't know <laughs> whether I can avoid it, but I will try. Uh, the simplest or the starting point of this starting on equalities is to understand this. And uh, let's imagine there, we've got a number line. 
and we've got 0. And uh, somewhere there we've got a, and somewhere there we've got minus a. And maybe, let me, in another color, let me put in brackets here, absolute value of x, uh, absolute value of x less than a, just in brackets. So let's take, discuss these things as well. Remember, when we're talking about absolute value of x, we need to cover the negatives and the positives. Is that right? Now, can somebody try to figure out what are we talking about? We're not talking about absolute value of x less than a. Is a number here having an absolute value less than absolute value less than a? Check that. If I pick a number there, will that number have an absolute value less than a? What if I pick it here? Absolute value of a number here will be less than a. Are you sure? Are you sure? Think about it. Think about it. If I pick a number here, will be the absolute value less than a? Remember we said the absolute value is like a distance from the origin. <laughs> no, is it? Okay. Then, if I pick a number here, it will be less than a? No. What about here? What about here? Yes, is it? Right. I think that is my alarm to stop the lecture. We are going to stop there and uh, we'll take it from there next time. All together. Let's not rush anything. But think about this. Think about this, but at the same time, also, I would like to invite you to think about this. And the pictures here will help you. Like the English people say, a picture tells more than what? What did they say? In English, you say, a picture tells more than? Uh, so, you, I think you wanted to go to a school like me in English, eh? I think they say, a picture tells more than 1,000 words, something like that. How do you Yeah, but here I think you can say, a picture tells more than 10,000 words. So, improve on the English. Thank you for listening.